Geologic Maps Part 1 Overview of Geologic Maps and Structural Features Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Subject of this series deals with geologic maps In Part 1 Overview of Geological Maps and structural features will be presented. This includes A. Outlines of geologic maps B. Nomenclature of the main structural features and C. Study of spatial setting of bedded rocks. In part 2, construction of geological cross-sections will be given. This comprises examples of systematic construction of cross-sections through hypothetical geological maps. The following structural features have been considered. Part 2a, simple dipping beds. Part 2b, an unconformity. Part 2c, a fold. Part 2d, a fault. A, outlines of geological maps. A map is a small scale representation of an area usually drawn on a sheet of paper. A geologic map shows the aerial distribution of rock units and structural features, among other things. Geologic maps usually display the landscape features through the use of contour lines. The nomenclature rock unit is used here as a general term that may represent a layer or a bed, a formation or part of it. A formation is a rock unit that is distinct enough to put on a map. On a geologic map, each rock unit is given a unique symbol and or color that depend on rock type, age, etc. A geologic map usually contains longitudes and latitudes, scale, the directions of the true north and magnetic north, a list of symbols, a geologic column, and topographic contour lines. Geologic maps are very important in various aspects of natural resources development, such as petroleum and natural gas, mining, water resources, and also in engineering planning and constructions such as land use planning, construction of dams, roads, tunnels, buildings, bridges, etc., among other uses. Few examples of geological maps are shown in the following figures. Geologic map of Texas Geologic map of the Western Blue Ridge province between the Little Tennessee and Hiwassee rivers, Southeast Tennessee and Southwest North Carolina. Generalized geologic map of Tennessee. Geological map of the confluence of the Rio Patuca and Rio Wampo La Musicicia Honduras. B. Nomenclature of main structural features. The main structural features that may be encountered in the field and their drawings and symbols may be found in some maps are 1. Joints. These are bricks in rocks without relative movement of rock material on either side of the bricks. They usually occur in sets. 2. Faults. Faults are bending or curving of layered rocks due to compressional forces among other factors. They may be in the forms of anticlines or synclines. General nomenclature of fault parts that applies to both anticlines and synclines. Axis, line joining points of sharpest folding of any layer of a fold. Axial plane, include axes and divides the fold as symmetrically as possible. Angle of plunge, when the axis is not horizontal, the fold is said to be plunging and the angle between the axis and horizontal plane is the angle of plunge. Limbs, sides of folds are called limbs. Folds, whether anticlines or synclines, are divided on the basis of the inclination of the axial plane and the dips of the limbs into 1. 
symmetrical folds. The axial plane is vertical and the limbs dip in opposite directions at the same angle. 2. Asymmetrical folds. The axial plane is inclined, limbs dip in opposite directions at different angles. 3. Overturned folds. The axial plane is inclined, limbs dip in the same direction, usually at different angles. 4. Recumbent folds. The axial plane is horizontal or nearly horizontal. Special types of folds are domes and basins. A dome is an anticlinal fold in which the dip is nearly the same in all directions away from a central point. A basin is a synclinal fold in which the dip is nearly the same towards a central point. 3. Faults. A fault is a break in rock material accompanied by relative movement on both sides of the break. Earthquakes usually occur as a result of faulting. Faults are classified according to the direction of movement of rock masses relative to the orientation, that is, strike and dip, of the fault plane. Thus, faults may be subdivided into a dip-slip faults. The mass of rock above the fault plane is called the hanging wall, and the one beneath it is the foot wall. In dip-slip faults, the relative movement of the rock masses is mainly along the dip of the fault plane. They are of two main types. A1. Normal faults. The hanging wall has moved downward relative to the foot wall. This is usually caused by tensional forces and it involves omission of beds in a well passing through the fault plane. A2. Reverse faults. The hanging wall has moved up relative to the foot wall. It is caused by compressional forces and usually involves repetition of beds in a well passing through the fault plane. If the dip of the fault plane is low, generally less than 45 degrees, the fault is called thrust fault. B. Strike slip faults. Slipping occurs mainly parallel to the strike of the fault plane. They are subdivided into B1. Right hand strike slip faults. When an observer stands on one block, the facing block has moved to his right. B2. Left hand strike slip faults. When an observer stands on one block, the facing block has moved to his left. C. Oblique slip faults. In this type, the relative movement occurs along both the dip and strike of the fault plane. Multiple adjacent faults may produce Graben and Horst. Horst is an elongated portion of the Earth's crust that has been either uplifted or remained stationary relative to subsided rocks on either side. Graben is a depression produced by subsidence of a block of the crust between parallel normal faults. 4. Unconformities. An unconformity is a surface of erosion or no deposition separating older beds below it from younger beds above it. It represents a missing time span from the geologic records. The time span may run from few hundreds or thousands of years to more than a billion years. Unconformities are classified into 4a angular unconformities. In this type, the dips of the beds below and above the surface of unconformity are not the same. For B, disconformities, surface of unconformity separates parallel beds. That is, the beds below and above the surface of unconformity have the same dip. 4. C. Nonconformity. An unconformity that separates massive igneous rocks from 
a cover of sedimentary rocks is called nonconformity. C. Study of spatial setting of bedded rocks. From solid geometry, the intersection between any two planes forms a straight line. Moreover, when a plane surface intersects a number of parallel planes, the lines formed by their intersections are parallel to each other. In the figure below, two parallel lines formed by the intersection of an inclined plane with two horizontal planes at different levels, d sub 1 and d sub 2. Both lines have the same direction, but their locations are different. Accordingly, when a number of horizontal planes intersect the top or bottom of a bed, the lines of intersection have different locations but the same direction, called strike. The attitude or orientation of a plane in space may be described by its strike and dip, which is the angle with the horizontal plane. However, the attitude of a line is its strength and plunge. 1. Strike. The strike of a bed, a faulty plane, or any other planar surface is the direction of the line formed by the intersection between the planar surface and the horizontal plane at a certain datum. Since by definition, the strike line is part of the horizontal plane, then all of its points have the same elevation. The datum is necessarily be specified because there are infinite number of horizontal planes and thus infinite number of parallel intersection lines. However, when a datum is indicated, such as a certain elevation relative to sea level, then the number of intersection lines reduced to one or to the number of datum levels that are considered. The strike line is expressed relative to the four cardinal directions, that is to say, north, south, east, west, or as azimuth. Azimuth is the angle measured from the north in a clockwise direction on the horizontal plane. It varies from 0 to 360 degrees. In expressing the strike in terms of the cardinal directions, the north direction usually written first followed by the angle then either east or west direction symbol. In the figure below, for example, the strike is north 28 degrees east. It is uncommon to express it as south 28 degrees west, though it is the same extension. In terms of azimuth, the strike is written as 28 degrees azimuth, where a single three-digit number is used. The lower number is usually given, thus the strike of north 28 degrees east would simply be 28 degrees azimuth, not as 208 degrees azimuth that is equivalent to south 28 degrees west. Although too much involved, the term azimuth, which is usually used in astronomy together with the terms zenith and nadir, is derived from Arabic as-samt, from al, the, plus samt, way or direction. The zenith refers to an imaginary point on the celestial sphere directly above an observer in the vertical direction. Its origin based on Arabic samt al-ras, path over the head. Nadir is a point on the celestial sphere directly below the observer, diagrammatically opposite the zenith. Its origin from Arabic nadir as-samt, opposite the zenith from Navara to see or watch. 2. Dip The acute angle between any planar surface, such as a bedding plane or a fault plane, and the horizontal plane is the dip. If the angle of inclination is measured in a direction perpendicular to the strike, it is known as true dip. If the dip is measured in a direction not perpendicular to the strike, it is called apparent dip. The angle of apparent dip alpha ranges from zero when the direction of measurement parallel to the strike 
to nearly the value of the true dip theta when the direction of measurement becomes almost perpendicular to the strike. Thus, alpha is greater or equal to zero and less than theta. The strike and dip symbol used in maps is a short line in the direction of strike crossed by a shorter perpendicular line in the direction of dip, usually with the value of dip angle. This figure shows a schematic diagram for the strike, true dip, and different apparent dips. ABCDEF is a horizontal plane. ABGH, BCHI, CDIJ, and DEJK are all vertical planes. The strike is in the direction of AF, north 55 degrees east. The true dip theta equals 36 degrees southeast. Note that A, B, G, H is perpendicular to the strike. The apparent dips alpha 1 equals 21 degrees east, alpha 2 equals 17 degrees northeast, and alpha 3 equals 0. Theta is greater than alpha 1, and alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2, and alpha 2 is greater than alpha 3. Note that B, C, H, I, and C, D, I, J are not perpendicular to the strike. D, E, J, K is parallel to the strike, and thus alpha 3 equals 0. The true dip is expressed by the angle of inclination, theta, from the horizontal plane followed by one of the four compass quadrants northeast, northwest, southeast, or southwest. The direction of measurement is not stated since it is by definition perpendicular to the strike. Thus, for example, the true dip in the above figure is 36 degrees southeast. The apparent dip is expressed by its strength, bearing or direction of measurement, and plunge, angle of inclination from the horizontal plane. The trend is either given in reference to cardinal directions or azimuth. It may be written, for example, as in a trend north 50 degrees west, the dip is 15 degrees, or in 310 degrees azimuth, the dip is 15 degrees, or 15 degrees northwest. Unlike the strike, which describes orientation of a plane, the trend in a pollen dip represents direction. Thus, a north 50 degrees west trend is not the same as south 50 degrees east trend. The value of dip, say beta, may be determined from the equation tan beta equals strike interval in meters over spacing in centimeters times scale, which is in centimeter over meter, where the strike interval is the difference between any two successive strike line values of a certain boundary. Spacing is the distance between the two strike lines. It is measured from the map. The scale is that of the map. In case of uniform dip, the spacing between strike lines is similar. However, the spacing will change if the dip changes. Note that the slope of the ground surface is given by Tangent alpha equals contour interval in meters over spacing in centimeters times scale in centimeters over meter, where the contour interval is the difference between any two successive contour lines. The spacing is the distance between the two contour lines and the scale is that of the map. This is the end of part 1. Next, part 2a construction of a section through a geologic map showing simple dipping pits. With my compliments. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.